Hey guys, I'm back again, and this week we're going to be doing another World War II figure. Uh, I had promised that we would be doing a World War II Japanese soldier really soon here, but we're not going to be doing that yet, unfortunately, because I still don't have a figure that I really like, uh, despite the fact that I was just at Salute and I had my pick of all kinds of great figures. I just... I still haven't been able to find what I really want, what I'm looking for in that regard. So, I'm sorry, we're gonna, it's going to be a little bit longer, but don't worry, I will get to it eventually. I haven't forgotten it, I know how many people want to see that. In the meantime, we are going to be doing this guy. Uh, in case you can't tell, this is a World War II British paratrooper. And I've had almost as many requests for him as I have for a Japanese soldier. And I suspect that's because he has a Denison smock on. And everyone wants to know how to paint Denison smocks because they are actually a little bit tricky to do. It's a tricky pattern, deceptively so. So that's what I'm going to be doing here is showing you how to do that. This particular figure is from West Wind, so it's a, one of the lesser manufacturers, not a, you know, Warlord or one of the big guys that I often use, so I like, you know, making a change. I chose this figure because of his sculpting. He's kind of big, kind of heroic proportions, a nice, big, expressive face, which I enjoy painting, and also not too much equipment on, which is good because it'll make it much easier to show you how the Denison smock looks. I've already gone ahead and given him a gray enamel base coat, and I've painted his skin and also his hair, uh, kind of in the usual way that I do. Um, there were some kind of nasty mold lines actually on one side of his face, and that kind of, I think that kind of, uh, I don't know, it made a little bit of a mess, but I think it's going to be okay in the end. Uh, just one more thing I want to point out about him really quick is that according to my boyfriend, who is a World War II British airborne uh, geek par excellence, the um, bayonet on this gun is not right for the type of gun. It's just, they don't match, it's the wrong kind, it doesn't, it wouldn't look like this on this rifle. So, that's, it's not completely correct, apparently. But, I think in other regards, this is a great figure, it has all the qualities I'm looking for, which is why I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. <laughs> so, we'll just go ahead and pretend that the bayonet is not a big deal. So I think that's mostly everything I wanted to say. Just Well, just accept one more quick note. Um, I am going to be away for the next couple of weeks because I am going to be visiting uh, my family in America. I like to go a couple times a year if I can. So probably no video updates during that time. Though you never know. I might get ambitious. We'll see what I feel like. But otherwise, I'll definitely be seeing you again after that, and I'll be resuming the sort of normal updates every weekend, as I have been doing. So I think since there's nothing else to say, why don't we go ahead and get started. So we're going to start out here by uh, applying a base coat to our Denison smock, and I am going to be using a mixture of Foundry Boneyard Medium and um, raw linen shade for this. Uh, you're going to probably want more raw linen in here than a uh, boneyard medium. Next go ahead and apply a wash of Citadel Agrex Earthshade all over the smock pretty generously so that we can kind of darken all of the recesses in the jacket. Once the wash is dry, I'm going to start applying highlight layers to the Denison smock. And for the first uh, highlight, I'm going to be using a mix of Boneyard Medium and the Raw Linen Shade. But I'm kind of reversing the proportions this time. So I'm going to start out with a much lighter color, basically. There's going to be a small amount of Raw Linen in proportion to a larger amount of Boneyard. But you do want to keep that Raw Linen in there because it gives the whole thing a sort of greenish cast. And if you stick with just Boneyard uh, Medium, it's going to be a little bit more orange than we want. So that's going to be the first layer. Uh, once that has dried, I'm going to continue on just using pure Boneyard as a, sort of a second highlight on, you know, areas that I want to feel even brighter. And then I'm going to use a final ha edge highlight, which is going to be a mixture of Boneyard Light and just a hint of raw um, linen shade just to make it, you know, a little bit greener. And that's going to be an edge highlight around the cuffs and on the sort of the tops of his shoulders and around all the different seams that are visible. And I realize as a base color, this is actually rather light for a Denison smock. They actually were often um, a sort of darker brown color as the base, but this 
is a case where we're going to be sort of tweaking the color and making it brighter than it would be in real life just because we need that extra contrast when you're working in 28 millimeter and it's going to result in a you know a better product at this particular scale all right so with the base of the Dennis and Smock done it's time to start painting the pattern and this is apparently for a lot of people very tricky and actually the pattern itself is not very hard the problem is i think that people tend to overdo it um and and then it's not because they're doing it wrong because if you look at an actual denison smock you'll see there's a very dense pattern on most of them the problem i think is that if you try to recreate that at 28 millimeter you're going to end up with something that looks muddy and dirty and there's not going to be a defined pattern on there so this is a case where we have to reduce um, what we're working with sort of try to get the capture the essence of the pattern rather than being perfectly accurate in how we paint it and the first step in that as i mentioned before was that we're using a higher contrast lighter base coat for the jacket than probably would have been the case in real life so the first step here is that we're painting green strokes or streaks onto the pattern and for this i'm using a vallejo us olive drab paint with a little bit of forest green light mixed into it and i've watered this way down it needs to be very thin very transparent not quite a wash it needs to have some coverage but it needs to be real thin so the base color and some of the shading shows through now, if you look at a real Denison smock, you'll see that the colors, it looks like you've really got sort of paint streaks all over the jacket. It looks like you took a paintbrush and you sort of swiped across and you, it, you get kind of rough edges and rough endings because the brush hairs kind of run out of paint. It leaves that sort of uneven pattern. This is actually pretty easy to simulate. What you should probably be doing here, at least what I do, is I go ahead and make lots of little narrow strokes with my brush, just lines right next to each other and create an increasingly wide line. But that way, by making lots of little strokes next to each other to create my wide line, I'm getting uneven ends at the top and bottom of the line so you're going to simulate that effect of it having sort of ending unevenly at the start and finish and you can even put some sort of thin lines off to the side on one edge you see that sometimes you can really vary it up and, and, and that's really all there is to it uh, you're just going to build up you're going to make a lot of narrow strokes to build up a wide stroke basically and you, since the paints are thin you're probably going to want to go back over these uh, streak several times after the paint dries just to build up extra depth and color where you need it, especially in the middles of the strokes and maybe in areas where there's going to be extra shade or shadow like under his arms for example once you've done the green strokes you're basically going to repeat that process with the brown i'm using uh, bay brown medium from foundry to do this and i've thinned it down a lot probably more than the green paint actually just because brown is a stronger color and it probably needs to be even less dense and it's going to be the same thing you're going to want to go over it and build up color and depth take several layers as necessary put more colors down in the creases and be sure when you're making your streaks that you go all directions with them go up down left right don't be consistent be very random in your stroke direction put some curve in there and be sure to overlap in places have the brown strokes overlapping the green strokes and because you've got this nice transparency thin paints you're going to see the colors sort of mixing on top of each other and that's absolutely great because that's exactly what happened in the real pattern so go ahead and do that with your brown and green strokes and once we're done with that it's going to be time to do a little bit of highlighting and that's actually not very hard what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to take my two base colors i've got my thin brown and my thin green i'm going to add increasing amounts of boneyard light into them and actually a little bit of more of the forest green light into the green as well and, and i'm so to kind of lighten those colors up and i'm going to apply those colors sort of on hot areas that would be hit by a lot of light within the strokes or on the strokes so on the top of shoulders or around the edges of the clothing on elbows on the tops of creases the places you would expect and you can leave these highlights intentionally kind of streaky so that there's darker color underneath that's absolutely fine it fits well with sort of the streaky nature of this pattern and i actually made several levels of highlights with the colors and kind of reserve the brightest ones just for the edges and the creases and stuff basically along the edges of the garment um when you're done you're probably gonna have some areas that look kind of washed out 
and that's kind of just the nature of the base color that you use and the highlights probably are going to come out maybe lighter than you expected so the final step after you've done this is going to be applying some washes to your streaks just to tone them down a little bit uh, I'm going to take for the brown streaks, I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade wash and I'm going to go over the brown streaks with it, especially emphasizing the recesses. And that's going to kind of make the brown colors a little deeper, a little bit richer. It's going to get rid of any, you know, sort of faded effect that you might have and really unify that. And then for the green, I'm going to take a pretty much equal mix of the... Um, Agrax Earthshade and the Citadel Green Wash. I can't think of the name right now, but just kind of 50 50 because you don't want a really bright green, green color for the, this. You want more of a brownie green, but you're going to use that then the same way on the green streaks as a wash to darken those out, uh, get more color in the recesses, prevent it looking too faded, and you know, also just unify those colors quite a bit. So the end result is you're going to get a pattern probably with more light areas in it than um, would be in the normal Denison smock, but that's intentional because, as I said, if you put as many streaks with as high density as on the regular coat, it's going to look overdone. So don't be so generous with your streaks. Leave plenty of base color areas showing through like I have, because even though it's, it's not 100% realistic, it will look better at this scale and it will avoid, you know, creating this kind of muddy mess feeling that you will get if you go ahead and really, really densely apply the brown and green streaks all over it. So just, you know, resist that urge, basically. Um, another thing, don't forget the cuffs on his sleeves. Depending on the Denison smock, they often took the tops of their socks uh, cut them off and sewed them around the edges of the, their sleeves sort of to make the sleeves fit tighter So they're sort of you can see there's kind of a, sort of that elastic stretchy banding around their sleeves And it's basically what that is it's socks and they would have been that green color So if you've got a smock with that kind of thing going on you want to just paint them that so solid green uh, color that you were using in the um, pattern and, and not attempt to do anything else it should just be green and you can see that that's what I've done here. The um, the Destin's Mock is really the hardest part of this uniform so now things are gonna get a lot simpler so I'm gonna next go ahead and base coat his pants and I am going to be using the um, Foundry British Uniform uh, triad for this. So I'm just going to apply the British Uniform brown shade color first to his pants. And then while that's dry, I'm also going to go ahead and base coat his scarf, which was made out of a sort of a webbing, basically, and it's a sort of a deep green. So I'm going to just go ahead, and go ahead and use that U.S. Olive Drab from Vallejo that I already had out, and I'm going to use that as the base color for the scarf. And, you know, go ahead and apply that nice and thick so you get a nice deep base for your scarf. And then I'm going to darken both areas further by adding an Agrax Earthshade wash to the trousers and a uh, pretty heavy Nuln oil wash to our web scarf area. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and continue highlighting the pants since the wash is dried. And I'm gonna use the rest of the British Uniform Brown Triad for that. So first the medium color, uh, then the light color, and then finally the light color with some boneyard medium mixed into it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply those colors and sort of blend them outwards, putting them on sort of increasingly small areas as I go, sort of as usual. And reserving, of course, that lightest color really for just the edges and bottoms of the pants, sort of the knees and the brightest areas. I'm then going to quickly highlight his scarf by first uh, taking a mix of the U.S. Olive Drab and some Forest green light and applying that sort of very lightly over the entire scarf area and then I'm going to apply a highlight kind of just along the top of that scarf and that's going to be the same color but then with some boneyard um, light mixed into it. I'm now going to start working on all his belts and straps and equipment 
And I'm gonna be using the Foundry British Equipment Canvas Triad for this, and it's sort of a light greenish khaki color, basically. Now, I've had it pointed out to me that this color, and actually this one I use in the pants as well, um, these colors are by Foundry, but they've been discontinued for whatever reason, or they're just, at any rate, they're not making them right now, which is really annoying. For some reason, I don't know, there wasn't enough demand for their World War II color range. Anyway, I think this is really crappy. I love these colors, they're really good. So I think you should bother Foundry and make them uh, re restart the series. However, in the meantime, you may still be able to pick up these color triads from various um, uh, shops or uh, vendors at shows that may still have a stock of them available. If all else fails, there are a lot of color charts online which convert between, say, Foundry and Citadel or Vallejo, so you should probably be looking at those to see if you can find some color equivalencies because they're great colors. I do recommend them, and I'm really sorry they're just that they're not easy to get anymore. So I'm first applying the shade color from that triad to his belt, his ammo pack, his sort of suspenders, um, the strap on his gun. He's also got some putties around the top of his boots, um, the straps holding his water canteen. Also, his shovel has a canvas cover and straps on it. All of those areas are going to be base coated in the, the shade color of that British equipment canvas. Also, when I finish with that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a seraphim sepia wash to the whole thing just to darken it down a little bit. Also, one more thing, the water bottle, it should be also covered in canvas, but a slightly different shade, basically. So I'm going to use that British uniform light as the base co coat for that canvas of the water bottle, because I want it to look slightly different than the strapping, basically. And now I'm just going to continue highlighting all of the straps and webbing and belts that I started to paint and shade before. And I'm going to continue using the British Equipment Canvas Triad for this. So first I'm going to apply the medium color onto everything and then the light color. And you should really use that mostly as an edge highlight. You don't want to overdo it. I did that in a couple places and I felt like I had to go back in and actually tone it down a little bit with the medium and shade color again because you probably don't want it to feel too bright. Uh, this is already quite a light bright color but you know you may need to tone it down. I actually even used some bay brown shade in places, thinned down quite a bit and I, to delineate further sort of the edges between some straps and some seams and stuff down in the recesses because I felt like there just wasn't enough contrast there and you may want to do that too depending on how your wash worked out. Uh, my wash in this actually didn't work quite right. It dried really shiny or something wrong with the wash, which meant I had to paint over a lot of the nice shade areas I got in the last step in order to get rid of the shininess. And end result was I ended up having to do a lot more work than I might have. Uh, actually, in retrospect, I might have used an Agrex or a shade wash for this instead of the Seraphim Sepia. I think it might have worked better and it might have, you know, darkened it better and got color more in the places that I wanted it. So that's something to consider. But, you know, otherwise just go ahead and apply the rest of the colors in the triad to all of the areas that we started earlier. Now I'm really going to quickly finish the other canvas on the water bottle. I'm first going to highlight it with some um, boneyard shade and then finish with a highlight of boneyard medium on that. Next, I'm going to move on to base coating the wooden areas, which include the stock of the gun and also his shovel handle, which is sort of attached with straps over sort of the blade of the shovel. And I'm going to be using bay brown shade for those areas. I'm also going to quickly base coat his boots and the leather band around the bottom of his beret just using some black paint. I'm next going to highlight his um, gun stock and the handle of his shovel using first uh, Foundry Chestnut Shade color 
which I'm going to apply fairly liberally, but I'm going to put thinly and blending outward so that it doesn't get too heavy. And then I'm going to take um, the chestnut medium shade and I'm going to use that as an edge highlight on those areas, sort of along the tops of, you know, different pieces of wood and also where there would be a lot of light hitting, basically. Now I'll highlight his boots and his hat band, uh, starting out first with a mixture of black and foundry uh, charcoal gray medium, uh, then followed by pure charcoal gray, sort of on the areas where light is hitting, and then finally finishing up with some Austrian gray shade, as sort of an extreme edge highlight to make the black leather areas look a little bit shiny. This color is nice, I think, because it's actually a little bit thin, a little bit transparent for gray, so you can apply it really nicely to these dark black gray areas and then sort of blend and feather it out a little bit without it looking, you know, too bright and too, you know, overblown. So I'm applying it sort of on the tops of his toes, sort of along the edge of his soles and where there's breaks in his leather shoes and just on his hat band, just sort of right in sort of the middle area on the front and sort of blending out to the left and right. So it looks like light is just kind of glancing off a a bit that of that leather area. All right, now for the hat. I am base coating this using Vallejo Black Red, and actually, if you look at a uh, airborne uh, beret, this is pretty much exactly what color it is already. However. This whole thing I've been saying earlier about kind of having to adapt things to work well with the scale kind of holds true here. So I'm going to be highlighting it with some brighter shades of red, you know, just because we need at this scale more contrast, more differences in color, and I want it to stand out and pop more than it would normally. So I'm going to start out by highlighting it with a mix of um, Citadel Mephiston Red and that uh, Vallejo Black Red, and then highlighting it up even further on the top, mostly using pure Mephiston Red, and then even a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet as well, kind of along the edges, but kind of thin. And this will make the beret appear quite a bit brighter, probably, than a real-life beret would, but at this scale, and given the sort of otherwise sort of dull nature of the rest of the uniform, you probably want to overcompensate here a little bit and make the hat intentionally a little bit brighter than it would be in real life. Okay, so now the last thing we're going to be doing is taking care of the metal. And I finally followed everyone's advice in the comments. I went out and I bought some Vallejo model air colors. Uh, and you're all totally right. And just for everyone who doesn't know, if you're going to get metallics from Vallejo, the model air colors are a lot better. The pigment density is way better. They just work tons better. So I don't know why I didn't do it earlier, but you should be using those. So <laughs> I'm going to paint all of the, um, the um, metal parts and barrels and the bayonet on the gun. And I'm going to first be using a mix of black and the model air um, gun metal color. Most you want black in this mixture. You want it to be quite dark because gun parts and gun metal and you know gun barrels are actually very very dark metal. They're not very shiny at all. So you don't want to overdo that. And I'm just going to apply that to all those areas. I'm also going to apply it sort of to the the top and bottom part of the shovel handle as kind of a base coat. Also, I'm going to I want to have an insignia on the front of his beret and depending on whether he's parachute or glider, that's going to be slightly different, but basically you just need to look at a picture of the little insignia that you're going to be doing and just use this as sort of the background base. Basically, probably it's going to be sort of just a little cross-like shape on the front of his hat using this dark color. We're just going to kind of fill it in. Once you've got the base coat done, you can just take some pure um, Vallejo era gun metal and you can use that to sort of gently highlight. Um, you want to apply most of it to the bayonet because the bayonet sort of, as I said earlier in the video, it's wrong, but it's sort of this sort of sword-like bayonet and it would be kind of shiny. So you want to apply quite a bit of shininess to the bayonet 
but not to any other areas of the gun, really, because they shouldn't be very shiny. Maybe just a little bit on the bolt action, areas that would be getting a lot of wear and tear, basically. And I'm going to also then apply it to very carefully to the front of his um, hat insignia, and that's and because we put that dark base down, it's going to really pop out there, and that's going to be sort of indication of a little um, wings and parachute insignia in this case. Uh, then finally, I'm going to take um, silver uh, model air, and I'm going to use that as the final accent, and that's really only going to go onto the bayonet. Um, it's a, some really extra shininess on his hat insignia, because that would have been very shiny. And of course, don't forget to be applying these colors also to the, sh the ends of his shovel handle, and you can make those a little bit shinier maybe than you would the, the gun hardware. Uh, because those areas are going to be getting worn and rubbing against things. So, you know, think about that, basically. And um, that's basically it for the metal. I also went ahead and gave, especially the bayonet, a, a Zerman um, blue wash to make it a little just more gun feeling and just to add a little extra dimension of color there. Uh, one other detail I'll just mention very quickly is he should have an insignia on his right arm and that'll be different for glider or parachute once again. You can just go ahead and rough in sort of a black field for that. Once again, go for kind of a little cross shape with a sort of rounded top. And then once you're done, you can kind of kind of make the indication of your wings and parachute or whatever you're doing inside there using, I use first the um, Austrian gray shade color and then just some bit, little dots of white along the tops to kind of make, give it a little dimensionality. But that's the only thing and that's kind of optional but it's, I think it's nice to add these insignia details because they add a little more personality and you know uh, a little bit more interest I think to the figure. So. I, personally, I would not skip this step if you, if as long as you're not, you know, have too much trouble with this kind of fine detail work. Okay, and that is our finished uh, World War II British paratrooper. Um, this was a pretty simple figure, actually. The only really uh, tricky part was the Denison smock, and so, you know, I think that's what most people were most interested in seeing, so I think that worked out really well. Uh, I think if I want you to take away anything from this video, it's that you need to remember when you're painting uh, small-scale figures like this that the way to get a good looking, achieve a good looking result is not going to be to directly copy the original in full scale because if you try to do that, you'll often end up with a muddy mess or there won't be enough contrast or any number of things like that. So we've, as you've seen, made some necessary adaptations to our Denison smock pattern and to the both in the field color and in the streaks and also to his hat in order to make that work out better at this scale. Um, so once again, I hope you really liked this video. If you did, please like it, uh, share it with your friends, um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I really appreciate that and you can keep up with what I'm doing and leave me comments about what you thought. More suggestions for upcoming videos are always great. I appreciate all of that. And so I guess that means I will see you next time and until then, uh, have fun painting.